Canaan filters are awesome. Been a big fan of them for a long time, but they can kind of get a bad rap if you maintain them the wrong way. They're awesome out of the box. You go to use them. They're great, killer, you know, performance, gas mileage, everything they claim is true. But now all of a sudden you go to service it and you lose power, you lose gas mileage. Well, I'm going to show you in this video how to clean and service it the right way so that you do not end up with any uh, issues where you lose power performance and it can work just as the first day you took it out of the box. Hey friends, I'm on the road and I'm not crazy about the condition of my k filter. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do to uh, clean and service these. So you're definitely going to need k and uh, filter oil. That's going to be number one. The other thing I did is I hit up a little dollar store and bought the good stuff. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that filter and I'm going to soak it in this Dawn dish soap. Because you're going to see and this is what will really clean it versus buying like a recharge kit. So, more effective way to do it. So, let's take a look at my filter and see what condition it's in. And this works for all your motorcycle can-ins, anything can-in. And you can see it's pretty dry. You see there's no uh, trace of the oil really uh, being on there. And who knows, uh, I know for sure it's been 5,400 miles. Uh, since I bought the vehicle. So it's just in, in poor shape. So all I'm going to do is just take the hose clamp off, soak it in a bucket of that uh, Dawn dish soap. I want to have it fully immersed. And what you'll see is that all that shit will just fall down in, uh, in the bucket. I'll kind of shake it up, agitate it. But I don't want to take brushes or any physical means to clean this. I want to let the uh, the chemical, if you will, the Dawn dish soap do the magic because this is actually like cotton. It is the best way to describe it. It's like cotton fibers in between that wire cage there. And if you aggressively try to brush it or do anything like that, what it'll do is it can actually tear it. Um, and it can also grab the, the, the cotton, if you will, and pull it together, binding it up. It's another reason you don't want to use a real high pressure blow gun because it'll push it all and, and make it thin in some areas, not allowing it to filter. And then it'll pack it so tight, it'll reduce the ability for it to flow uh, air and that's why a lot of people get into trouble uh, with their canines when they buy it the first time around it's pre-oiled like oh this thing's awesome more power you know better gas mileage everything's rock and then the first time they service it they're like wow this thing's junk you know so you, you got to know how to maintain a canine air filter so let's go ahead and get that off get it cleaned and then i'll show you uh i literally just let it air dry i'm gonna put it out in the sun let it air dry and then once it's dry i'll apply the uh the air spray, uh, the air the arsenal, excuse me, of the uh, air filter oil and show you like how much to put on. All right, let's get at it. One of the things I'm gonna do when I take this off, I'm gonna actually see how good it was sealing. If I see any crap that's leak packs the seal, then it means it wasn't tight or it wasn't doing its job. I'm going to look down the intake here and I want to see how good a job it's been doing as well. So if I saw any of that dust or anything on the inside, that would be a really good indication that I have a tear or this was loose or something else. So let's go ahead and give it a little. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay. Okay. Nothing on the inside. So doing a great job, k and Let's just get you back in shape uh, so you can be good to go. Now, the other thing I'm gonna recommend is when you're at this point and you're taking that filter off, I don't care. I'm not a fan of leaving those open. I have no idea if some critter is gonna get in here overnight and cause a mess for me. Same thing for motorcycles and ATVs. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff something in there so I can prevent any problems from happening. Let's find ourselves a little something, something. Getting plugged up. Just gonna leave my tool right there and let's start cleaning. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it this way so that all that junk just falls out. Because the taper, I want gravity to help me and like gravity pull it down. Here. Really just getting that dusted off there. Like I said, no compacting of the fibers. Okay. 
back to the hot water solution. All right, let's check this out. Did some other dishes while I was in here. Let's see what we got going. So you can see how dirty that water is. Yeah, yeah. So it. Let's see what we're dealing with here. I mean, you can just tell. Look at that dirt. Look at that. So this, obviously you saw, was cleaned. Tell me that that Dawn dish soap don't do a good job. Now I'm going to have to clean up the tub. For Aunt Kim. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then, what I'm going to do, it's getting hot again. Rinse it. Actually, I'll go this way because it's going to push it through. It's going to push it through and out. All right. So just when you think about this, I mean, this was an unabrasive way to clean this out. So we're going to let this thoroughly dry and we'll get up close here and let you check out, you know, the pleats there and then we'll get it uh, coated up. But this is how you not ruin it. Very, very important step. All right, let's let this dry. We'll get it coated and wrap this up. So now that we know we're clean and we can actually see light through all those pleats, that's what you're seeing on the other side there. We're going to be good to spray it. So what they say is to spray about three inches away and then just go down the pleats. Okay, like so. And then it also says to wait uh, 20 minutes uh, to let it soak, let it run down, get the excess off before you put it uh, into service. So I'm going to go ahead here and just let this do its thing. I'll come back after uh, 20 minutes and uh, show you what it looks like. All right, let's take a look here after 20 minutes. And what you're going to find when you do it right, and you let that all just even out. And I did go back and check it after a couple minutes and saw a couple flat spots. And that's what they say to do in the directions. Go back and do touch-up areas. But when you're, when you're good... You're going to have a really nice, uniform, even coat all the way around. You don't want it where it's dripping out and you put it on your vehicle because that'll suck uh, into your engine, which really isn't like the end of the world. But if it starts hitting sensors, uh, some mass flow at sensors, especially in the auto world, don't really care for that. So you can still see where I can see light through there, but I'm coated, I'm protected. And you can see that just from sitting for that 20 minutes, look at all that uh, collection of oil that's ran down there and puddled up. So that's another good example of why you want to let it just sit and uh, do its thing, right? So what I'm looking for right now is to see if there's any other spots that I may have missed. Because if you don't get oil on the cotton, what you're doing is you're you're not getting the benefit of the filtration. So it obviously will still breathe, but the whole idea of replenishing that oil is to create the protection. The oil is what really helps capture the dirt and the debris, not just the mesh screen or the cotton, but uh, like I said, that oil helps uh, attract that and catch it and retain it so that you end up with an intake that looks like this, where the inside is really good and clean and the outside is doing its thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this fire this baby up got the hemi in here digging this truck let's uh let's see how it all turns out all right another note here one thing you want to do and take your old rag with the oil that you cleaned uh clean everything up on and i want to go ahead and just make sure that this seal is good and dry and clean uh, and what i like to do a lot of times on my filters i've got the oil that's on this rag but just kind of talking filters in general it's not uncommon that i'll take and actually put like a bead of grease 
around there so that as you clamp it down now if you're gonna do modifications and stuff like that you better have a good clamp better know what the heck you're doing but we'll go ahead here and just slip this baby back on here and one thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna reorientate that clamp so it's easier to work with they kind of had it in a funky angle and uh let's get this baby put back together here all right, my friends, there you go. It doesn't matter if you're working on the motorcycles, you're working on ATVs, you're working on automotive. Doesn't matter if you've got this Canon uh, product. This is the proper way to uh, service that filter, keep it in good life so it's protecting your engine while giving you maximum performance uh, as designed. So you really uh, want to stay on top of this. You know, people are going to ask, like, how often should I do this? I do it by how the filter looks. When it looks dry and, and you start to just see what looks like the, the dried cotton, if you will, or if I ran through dust or dirt or something where it was crazy uh, dusty over the course of a weekend, say I'm doing some um, off-roading to go dirt biking or whatnot, then I'm going to do it on a more regular basis. So no real rhyme or reason. It's just too variable on how these get uh, dirty or reduce their performance. If you're ever in doubt at any time, you can pull it off and just make sure that the intake doesn't have any uh, crap in it to let you know that the filter's at least doing its job. Uh, you may notice when these get uh, really dirty, you may notice a drop in fuel mileage telling you that, hey, I should go in there and service my air filter. That's another uh, thing to think about. But that is uh, how you do it. If you haven't done so yet, make sure and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and finish our trip and uh, get on over to Daytona for Bike Week. So hopefully we see some of you there. Anyway, as always, make it a great day. Keep wrenching. We'll talk to you again soon.